Locked On Jazz for the 8th of October. A deep dive into the Utah Jazz rotations. How does Eric Paschal, how does Jared Butler, how does Trent Forrest all get involved? Plus, what about the other guys when Mike Conley sits out? We'll dig deep into the Jazz rotation for this upcoming season. Plus, Rudy Gobert and Hassan Whiteside is having another big guy in the building, particularly helpful to Rudy. What happens if Zion Williamson has a great year? It's all coming up on a Friday edition of Locked on Jazz. You are Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. How are you? I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider. This is Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast. I'm the Utah Jazz, giving you insight, expertise, geeky numbers, hopefully making it way better to be a Jazz fan each and every day. Thanks so much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. Every day we are available for you and free on all platforms, including YouTube, where we usually go live most mornings. Thank you to the live audience that has joined us. Good morning to Bryce, who threw me a little shout out there this morning. Glad to have you involved. Uh, I want to dig into the rotations. And this is going to be geeky and probably going to in some ways be better if you actually had a, like, pen to paper. And, like, it's it's not the greatest one out there. Hello to, from JB in France, where it's 4 o'clock um, today. Uh, let me let me. I want to dig into this. So w- we know that our lineup, our starting lineup, is is going to be Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Boyan Bogdanovich, Royce O'Neal, and Rudy Gobert. That was our most common lineup last year. It was plus eleven. Interestingly enough, it was actually one of our worst offensive lineups. It was in the fifty fourth percentile offensively early in quarters. Teams are probably a little bit more engaged. Defensively, it was in the seventy seventh. It was act, but it was plus eleven. Um, and one of the things that's kind of interesting to look at is shot frequency on these lineups. And, I'll, and there's a reason why I'll do this. And this, and we shot 31% of our shots at the rim with that lineup it was actually one of the most for us. We, we did not shoot at the rim. We were in the 15th percentile shooting at the rim last year. And we shot with that group. We shot about 42% of our shots as threes. And so that lineup will be the same. Um, you know what, actually, I kind of hope it's a little better than it was last year. It, that, some of those numbers are are one of the few areas where I would argue that this team actually has a chance. Uh, this group actually has a chance to get a little bit better um, than it was, that it just, it didn't shoot it great. Uh, it didn't in that lineup. I don't know, you know, Boyan and Mike and Donovan all want the ball early in the game. You're executing a game plan. I think the jazz wear teams out uh, as they go on, as the game goes on and they're coming in yet another wave and another wave and another wave. The, the next lineup the Jazz played most often last year, and this is where the substitutions get interesting and we start to try to compare to this next year, is that Jordan Clarkson and Derek Favors would usually make the next substitution. Sometimes it was Joe Ingles. Sometimes, you know, depending, sometimes it was Derek, uh, uh, Jordan Clarkson. Kind of within a few minutes, they all happened. Depending where we were in the season, frankly, Jordan's, Minix extended as the year went on. The the first one that was when Joe Ingles and Derek Favors would come in, that lineup actually was our was our worst lineup of the year that played a kind of decent amount and had our main guys in it. It was only plus 3.8. It was only in the 54th percentile again offensively, and it wasn't very good defensively. Donovan Mitchell, Royce O'Neal, Boyan Bogdanovich, Joe Ingles, and Derek Favors. That that lineup wasn't great. Um, plus 3.8 for the season. I suspect we'll still see that lineup. It'll just be with Hassan Whiteside. Though early, later in the year, we made the switch that that first substitution became Jordan Clarkson with Derek Favors. And that lineup was more successful. That was a plus 8.5 lineup. Uh, with was really good offensively, 124 offensive rating, 81st percentile. One of our best offensive a lineups and it just wasn't as good defensively. And this is where if Whiteside can have a positive impact, these lineups with Derek and we're just not good. Our primary lineups with Derek were in the 33rd and 46th percentile defensively. We're just not particularly good. So 
I think the chances are, if you kind of look at what we're doing, our first substitution is either going to be Hassan White will be Hassan Whiteside for Rudy Gobert, and then our next substitution will either be that Joe Ingles for Mike Conley or Jordan Clarkson for Mike Conley substitution, just depending on where they are. I suspect it will be that Jordan Clarkson for Mike Conley lineup. And so this, again, really is not any different other than Hassan Whiteside for Derek Favors. And if you look at that group and we get into shot frequency, that group almost never shot at the rim 26% and took 44% of their shots at the rim. Excuse me, as threes. So a little bit below our norm. They were a little heavy for us. That was the most heavy. The Jordan Clarkson, Donovan Mitchell, Royce O'Neal, Boyan Bogdanovich, Derek Favors was the most heavy mid-range lineup we had. We actually took 30% of our shots in the mid-range in that group, uh, largely because Donovan and Jordan probably pretty willing to do that um, in that group. So that's that's where we said Really nothing other than white side for Favors at this point gets different. Now this gets interesting because the next substitute, at some point now Joe comes in or Jordan and the next substitution involved George Niang. And that lineup that had Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles, George Niang, and Rudy Gobert was the lineup that we used that swung from the end of the first quarter to the beginning of the second quarter and was by far our best lineup last year. Killed bench units. Plus 14, well, actually, we had one lineup that was actually a little bit better. I'll get to that in a second because it's actually what kind of comes out of um, this lineup when, when JC sits down. And that is, that lineup was a plus Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles, George Niang, Rudy Gobert was plus 14.4. It was in the 75th percentile offensively, 65th percentile defensively. It was really, really good. Now, what's so special about that group, and there's a reason I've been using this statistic, is that group took 53% of their shots as threes, one of the highest numbers of anyone in the league, and was in the 75th percentile in effective field goal percentage. So what are we going to do this year here? The Eventually, this substitution becomes Rudy Gay, and maybe a little bit earlier. Like it runs a little bit longer. Rudy Gay plays more than George Niang did. And eventually this lineup becomes Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles, Rudy Gay, and Rudy Gobert, just to make a play-by-play announcer's life hell. Um, and that's where, but between now and then, what do we do? The logical deduction was that that was going to be Eric Pascal getting those minutes in that group. But there's... Some, there's an interesting discussion, I think, to be had here. If what made that group so special was 53% of their shots being taken as threes, Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles, all being able to handle the ball, all shooting threes, almost no mid-range shots being taken out of that group, is Eric Paschal going to fit, or is Eric Paschal's lack of three-point shooting at 30% for his career, and as you've seen, So far in preseason, it doesn't look as though that's going to change. He's working very, very hard um, to try to fix some of that. But that high jump that he takes leads to probably a little less um, efficiency with that shot. And so now, do you believe that Eric Pascal can be on the floor in a lineup in which you shoot 53% of your shots as three? And George took a lot of those in that lineup. Like if we dug into individuals in those lineups, they they were he was pretty active. The other choice would be to go to Jared Butler right there. Now this gets kind of funky. You're suddenly really small. Um, you're Mike Conley at six one, Jared Butler at six one to six three, Jordan Clarkson, and Joe Ingles slides to your power forward position in the spot of George Niang. I do like that. If you can suddenly tell me that Joe Ingles is now taking the George Niang shots, to me, that's a pretty interesting idea that you switch those roles. And you're while you are super small defensively, you still have Rudy on the floor. And I think Jared Butler, at least if he's going to play offensively, is going to need to have Rudy, a big dominating big behind him for a good deal of it. That group was able to rebound fairly well last year. 22 or they 
77.6% with Gobert and Niang and Ingles and Clarkson and Conley. You take out Niang and put in Jared Butler, you've gotten small and you've got to figure out whether you can rebound. Uh, but it's an interesting little play right there. First off, it sounds great because everyone's in love with Jared Butler right now, but now let's walk through some of the, the the reality of whether that actually can work. First of all, what does he do offensively? Like, that's why he's on the floor. Is he, is he just floor spacing? Because you have Mike Conley and Jordan Clarkson, so you're probably not running Jared Butler off a of pick and roll in that lineup. Or wanting to, I mean, it's an option, but it's your third option in that lineup. And Joe Ingles is on the floor, so it's really your fourth option of the guy you want having the ball in his hands and making a play. So are you simply just spacing him on the floor as a floor spacer, which might have incredible value. Gravity is super important. That group was successful because it shot over 50% of his threes. And you suddenly put Eric Pascal on the floor, you might lose all that gravity and all that spacing. And that would be a problem for that group. Um, it, what is, what about defensively? What are you doing defensively at this point where Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles, Jared Butler are all on the floor together? Most teams are probably going to go small at this point in this league. Most teams don't have a backup center. The question is whether most teams have enough offensive players to be able to take advantage of that grouping and go after those guys. That, I think, would be um, an interesting angle and I don't know, I'd have to really go review the lineups of everyone around the league of whether or not that's something those teams can do. And then, you know, when it becomes Rudy Gay, it's really simple. Then Butler, Butler's out, Rudy Gay's in. Like, that's you just play that. But in the time that we're bridging, is that a way that you actually get Jared Butler minutes? And then what's his interesting note on that, if he's playing well, when Mike Conley checks out, you can leave him in a little bit, and maybe you're able to get Conley out of the game a little bit earlier and get Conley some more rest. But I do like the idea of Joe becoming the George Niang four in those minutes. Right now, more than I like Eric Pascal as a 30% three-point shooter. Now, Pascal does, does show that he can play with the ball in his hands, does show that he can defend and switch a little bit, and he's much bigger. You're just super small if you do that. What gets really interesting is what happens on the nights when Mike Conley doesn't play, which are not, you know, the early on, it's the sixth game of the year is on a back end of a back-to-back. -back. Uh, the 10th game of the year is on the back end of a back-to-back. -back. The um, 20th game is on the years on the back end of a back-to-back. -back. You know, if, if, if we don't see Rudy Gay till December, that's later than I would suspect, but maybe let's call it December 1. We, we have four or five games where Mike Conley doesn't play pending any other type of injury. So let's dig into that um, and what happens here. Uh, exciting news over at Hyundai, uh, Murdoch Hyundai. Some Palisades are coming in. There's a good shipment of Palisades. I mean, it's been just so hard to get the car you need and you want right now. And uh, I got a note yesterday from Jason Creech over at uh, Murdoch Hyundai that there is a new run of Palisades coming in. Here's what's coming in. Uh, in the re and you might want to jump on, and actually some other as well, but the Palisades are the black SEL premium eight-seater and the Rainforest SEL premium eight-seater coming in. The black SE and the silver calligraphy and the black calligraphy. Murdochs have said they will not increase MSRP. They do not believe in it. They're not going to gouge people, as Blake said. I'm not going to the grocery store or the church around people I live with and know that I gouge them when we in this time. So those Palisades will be here. They're, they may not be here till late November, but I mean, cars are being sold before they're on the lot. So if you're interested right now in a Palisade for the winter, unbelievable car, stop by Murdoch Hyundai. You can test drive a Palisade. They have one on lot. You can see what it is and then check out the ones that are coming in. A few others that are coming in as well. 22 uh, Tucson hybrids, the black limited and the white limited and the 22 Santa Cruz white limited. So those are all, Heading in, probably going to get in in November, but that's some inventory uh, for everybody. If you're looking for a Hyundai right now, looking for a car, check out Murdoch Hyundai. They have enough cars in the lot for you to go check out what they are, just not maybe the specific one. And then you can get in order, look what's ordering and when it's coming in. It's all at Murdoch Hyundai, located at 4646 South State Street, also located in Logan and in Linden. It's Murdoch Hyundai. 
Feel free to email me first and I'll set you up with a VIP meeting with any of the great salespeople. Well, I have specific people that know how to handle the, the, the feisty locked on car buyers the best, right? You guys are all, you guys are all feisty. Fantasy basketball is right around the corner and Sleeper is the app for it with their new game called Game Pick. In 2020, Sleeper released a brand new way to play fantasy basketball called Game Pick. It's only available on Sleeper. Game Pick owners pick a single game per week for each started account towards their team score, ensuring an even number of games played between opponents. Day of losing because your opponent plays more game or having to look all that silly stuff up or over, but the day of picking the right matchup, home versus away, defensive ratings, pace of play, things that locked on jazz listeners can handle, all adds up to more strategy, less busy work, and a better league. So if you want a dynasty, redraft, keeper, fantasy, whatever it might be, the game pick has you covered. Download the sleeper app, get your buddies together, and start your league with your friends today. You will not be disappointed. It is all at the Sleeper app, and it's the Game Pick League, and do it with your Locked on Jazz friends, and then beat them. Listen to Locked on Fantasy Basketball as your second listen today to get that done. All right. Um, Bryce says hello, and somebody says hello from South Korea, whose name I can't read because it's in characters, and I'm not that smart. Um, Do the Jazz play Hughes, Forrest, or Butler? like the 49ers with their quarterback. Um, So the idea there that comes from Bryce is that Trent Forrest is fabulous at controlling the game as point guard, seeing the floor, getting the ball where he wants to, using his strength, um, popping open some some shots, uh, uh, floaters, and is terrific defensively. Jared Butler's a fabulous shooter, gets to where he wants to with craftiness, more of an offensive-minded than a passer, not as good defensively maybe weak defensively as a rookie. And so do you use them pending matchups? I I absolutely think um, you could. Let's get into this because this gets really interesting. Last year when when Mike Conley didn't play, the Jazz changed and didn't do the same rotation system. Gobert played three stints. That's record all rotations. Rudy plays six, sits, plays five, sits, plays six to close and then has his base 12 minutes a base 17 minutes a half and 34 minutes in a game. Um, So that's the key to all of our rotation systems that we have is that that happens. What the Jazz did on nights where Mike Conley didn't play was the first substitution was Whiteside with Clarkson. And Ingles would then sit. Ingles would start and then Ingles would sit. And so now you had Donovan, Clarkson, Boyan, Royce, and Rudy for a little while. And then the next substitution would be Joe Ingles circling back along with uh, George Niang and then very shortly thereafter, Rudy Gobert. So Niang is not there anymore. The way we've just talked about this is that could be Jared Butler, but now you'd need another player. So the easy answer is Eric Pascal again, gets those minutes on those nights in which until Rudy Gay comes back. Now it's Rudy Gay, it's just Rudy Gay. And then when... Mike Conley is out. It's just probably Jared Butler or Trent Forrest based on these matchups we're talking about for just some kind of a, a brief stint filling in. Um, and so I think that's the, um, that's kind of the, the obvious one. But until that happens, this is where I think the next few preseason games get really interesting because – I think you now have a choice of whether it's Eric Paschal, Elijah Hughes, or Mia Oni. Elijah Hughes really, I think, has played well. So you're going to have Joe Ingles and Jordan Clarkson on the floor with Jared Butler. This is Mike Conley is out. So Jared Butler, Joe Ingles are kind of your two ball main ball hands. Jordan Clarkson's now playing. And to some extent, Joe, I like, again, here in the George Niang four role. So that opens up, does Mia Oni play? Does Elijah Hughes play? Or does Eric Paschal play? And then Joe plays back to point guard. But if Butler's able of being the primary ball handler on nights where Mike Conley's not on the floor, then you have Butler and Clarkson with any of those, with Mia Oni or Elijah Hughes, and Joe Ingles and Rudy Gobert. Uh, I think that's, you know, gets at least interesting. Again, probably earned 
largely in the next few days. Uh, I thought Elijah Hughes looked really good. Mia Oni has established himself as being able to play and the team to be successful. He's just not shooting it well at all. Unfortunately, didn't shoot well. What, 20, after April, I think shot 22% from three. Um, so Elijah Hughes has kind of cracked that door open as someone who might be able to play and is learning maybe how to play defense. Jared Butler and Elijah Hughes on the floor together defensively. Ooh, doggy, we're relying on Rudy Gobert, but maybe we are. And again, maybe against second units, that's all right. Um, but that gets, that's a really, to me, that's kind of what we're, so we're watching Jared Butler here to see, it, to sum this up, we're watching Jared Butler here. And the first thing is like, is he earning himself so much or Trent Forrest, frankly, that you're going to just drop Joe into the George Niang role. Eric Pascal's not in the rotation while Rudy Gobert's out as anticipated. And you're playing a really small lineup against those bench units to start. And then can you rebound? Can you defend? But could you play fast? Can you still get 50% of your shots up as threes? Like, I think that's a really vital lineup in the way they played and taking that rate of threes in that period of time, I think is, is really important. Part two of this is for the four or five games that Mike Conley doesn't play in that stretch of 20 that maybe Rudy Go Gay misses. I just stretched that number out pretty high for the sake of this show. Um, I mean, it is 20 games. If Rudy Gay doesn't come back till December 1st, that's 20 games, but that seems really long. Like, I think Rudy Gay's coming back before then. If Rudy Gay comes back somewhere in that homestand in November, I'm making these up. I have no idea what his situation is. I don't even know when he had surgery. Um, but if you're if you're working at those kind of dates somewhere in there, then it's it's only about three or four games for this, but it's fun to talk about. Then it's then I think Elijah Hughes has a real chance of possibly, you know, working his way into the lineup and getting himself an opportunity there for those minutes um, a lot in that in that stretch that you suddenly go to a Joe Jared Butler, Joe Ingles, Jordan Clarkson, Elijah Hughes lineup with Hughes as the three. But Hughes is going to have to show he can really rebound and do a bunch of other things. Oni's pretty good on the offensive glass. So this is at least, you know, interesting to watch. Um, Riker asked, do you think if Butler and those other guys play well enough, the Jazz move to a nine or ten man rotation? They've been a nine man rotation. I think that's actually what they prefer to do. It really works well for them. It allows them to slide Joe out early and back in as the point guard and play him extended minutes. The only way you're going to a 10 man rotation is if somebody's playing like a four minute stint. It's not, there's just aren't, you're not going to play him 10 minutes and a half, four minute, you're going to play him in a four minute stint. Is there somebody who can play a four minute stint so that Mike Conley goes from 32 minutes to 28 and he plays well enough that Joe Ingles goes from 32 to 28 um, and the guy plays eight minutes a night? And it's really a conservation of Joe Ingles and, uh, Mike Conley or Boyan Bogdanovich more than anything else. That would be the scenario where you go to 10. Um, I also think it's a really, really hard way to play well. Playing that eight minute is really hard. Um, Jamarello says, like Mike said, probably Mike Conley, they won't need everyone every night being super deep. I really believe the Jazz most likely filled their holes they need had in last year's playoffs. Let's hope so. I mean, Rudy Gay is going to be the vital piece there, and we'll see whether Hassan Whiteside can play well. I, Hassan didn't play great in his first game against San Antonio, and we'll see whether there's a consistency to Hassan Whiteside um, that is that of a championship-level player. And can he consistently come out and give you eight minutes you know, two four minute stints uh to and then sixteen minutes a night. Um it'll be interesting to see. Uh today's show is brought to you by betonline.ag. I actually want to touch on this in the next segment, but interesting little note about what wins an MVP and what doesn't. At betonline.ag, they nailed it last night, by the way, on the line on the football game, unfortunately, as my Seahawks, my wife and daughter were at the Seahawks game and I haven't heard from them. I'm sure my wife Daughter is super, super upset today. Um, so uh, the MVP rankings <clears throat> on the, and I'll talk about this in the next segment. There has never been, or it's been since 2011 that an MVP came beyond 2,500 odds to be your MVP. David Thorpe of True Hoop points out Zion's at 2,800, Anthony Davis at 2,800, and Donovan's at 3,300, and Paul George at 3,300. Those four like could have MVP years and have a massive impact on uh, the on the playoffs. Uh, 
and on the West. If you want to get involved, uh, betonline.ag is our trusted site for over 20 years. Betonline.ag. Use your promo code locked on and get a 50% welcome bonus. Today's show is also brought to you by Built Bar. What's the latest at Built.com? Strawberry puffs. They just are not stopping right now. They add the mint, the churro puffs. It looks to me as though the mint puffs have sold out. The strawberry puffs now. Cherry lime still available. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, 5 grams of sugar, plus the regular peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, and coconut mint brownie, salted caramel, raspberry, double chocolate, cookies and cream, and cherry barcia. All 100% real chocolate, all 100% really delicious. Try the brand new strawberry puffs. Limited time while supplies last. It's always fun to see what Built has new each and every day. 130 calories, 2.5 fat grams, 4 net carbs and 4 sugars, plus 4 grams of fiber and 17 grams of protein. Tastes too good to be true. It is true, though. The churro puffs are back. The strawberry puffs are new. The cherry lime is there, and it's all at Built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off. Here's what I wanted to point out on that MVP thing. I actually think those three or four, like Donovan has an MVP year. The Jazz are great again. Russell Westbrook's plus 2,500 for MVP. Obviously, if he has a plus an MVP year, it's crazy what it does to the Lakers. Anthony Davis is plus 2,800 for MVP. Like, I think he has to have an MVP season for them. And then Zion's plus 2,800 for MVP. And I think it's maybe a stretch, but like, what happens if Zion's great? which is not unreasonable. Zion was absolutely astronomically great at the end of last season when they started playing as point Zion and no one had any idea how to guard him or stop him. You know, he's got this foot issue. He's supposed to be back by the regular season. But like from March on, Zion averaged 29 points a game, seven rebounds, four assists, and I think shot close to 60%. Like, Okay, well, the rest of us, I mean, if you're that good, pretty hard to stop. The final 30 games of the year for Zion, he shot 61% from the field, averaged 29 points, seven rebounds, four assists. That's insane. And if he's doing that, they can't help but be good, frankly. And then you got Carl Anthony Towns, who I think could have a massive year. And Paul George, I think, could have an MVP year. Kind of crazy to look at the bottom of the West. These teams that we think are not going to have that big an impact and realize that they have star players that could have mammoth impacts on the season. It's it, To me, that's, like, daunting. I don't know. I think anyone in Sacramento is ready to have the MVP year, but I do think the Cat puts it all together with a new head coach and becomes, you know, mammoth. I do think Paul George is capable. I do think Zion's capable. And I think Anthony Davis has to for the Lakers. And those guys are all under 2,500, and there has not been a MVP since 2011. Like, what if the guys that are above that on betonline.ag, Lucas, Steph, Giannis, Durant, Embiid, LeBron, Lillard, Harden, Jokic, Trey Young, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul. Tatum's interesting. Like, Boston... Tatum makes a jump. Jalen Brown makes a jump. Doesn't Boston get better than everyone trying to claim they are right now? Final one I want to touch on. There's a lot of talk about Hassan Whiteside's value for Rudy Gobert. And I think there is some validity to this conversation for right now in training camp. I want to see what the validity is over the course of the year. Because Rudy really gets very simple. Once the year starts, he just wants you to help him help us win. And like, if you help him win, Rudy's all in. And if you don't help us win, then Rudy's not all in. Um, and I think it's going to be a really interesting thing. But yes, in practice right now, pretty dramatically different experience for Rudy Gobert to have a seven-footer that he's going up against every day and having that impact um, going up against him. So I think that's um, uh, kind of a, you know, that's definitely different um, than what we anticipate, than what we've seen. All right, I mentioned this yesterday. I'm trying this. I've never tried this on YouTube before. I had a conversation with Donovan Mitchell about... His shooting, I thought it was super interesting, and I want to try to play it for you, and I have no idea if you're going to be able to hear the first part of it. It's about his shooting. Um, so I'm going to try it here and see whether or not it 
gets through to you. This is kind of a dry run. So that's why I left it for last on the show. And the answer is no. Try another. And the answer is still no. Third answer is no. Last answer is no. I have not figured out yet how to play audio to, for you in our YouTube broadcasts, but it was worth a try. Thanks for being there for that failure. Thanks for making Locked On Jazz your first listen of the day. Locked On Fantasy Basketball is ready for you. Plus, if you're a baseball fan, we launched our new MLB Insiders with Gordon Beckham on our YouTube channel, MLB, and gave you previews of the Giants, Dodgers, as well as the Brewers and the Braves uh, if you want to grab those today. It's all at the Locked On MLB uh, channel as well. Have a great one. Talk to you soon.